Good morning students. We are learning pavement design and heavy construction and we are discussing on the rigid pavement design wherein in today's lecture we will discuss on Freiburg's analysis on the Dowell bar and also we will learn the pavement design overview for the low volume roads. So starting with the Freiburg's analysis on the Dowell bars before Freiburg's analysis to engineers Timoshenko and Lessels worked on the first model of a rigid beam on an elastic foundation that could be applied to a double bar system. So according to Timoshenko, the deflection of the beam that he had considered as a Y on an elastic foundation with the load P that is E raised to beta x upon 2 beta cube EI into P cos beta x minus beta mu 0 into cos beta x minus sin beta x. Wherein x is the distance along the double bars from the face of concrete and M0 is the bending moment on the double bars at the face of the concrete. The relative stiffness of a bar that is embedded in the concrete is given by an equation wherein this beta value is considered as a relative stiffness of the bar. Okay, And this beta is the fourth root of a ratio of k into d upon 4ei wherein this k is the modulus of dowel support that is kilogram per centimeter cube the d is the diameter of the double bar e is the modulus of elasticity elasticity and i is the moment of inertia for the double bar now here freiburg's come freiburg used this equation for the double bar in the concrete pavement so before it analyzed for concrete pavement it was uh, it was analyzed for a particular concrete beam. So Freiburg have used this equation for the concrete pavements. Now, if joint width opening is Z and the C and the concrete is very steep compared to the steel bars, the moment at the face of the concrete is considered as m0 that is minus pz by 2 before previously we have considered m0 as the bending moment at the dowel bar okay the so same way the moment at the face of the concrete that m0 is minus pz by 2 where only at the face of the concrete now substituting this m0 value in above deflection equation with considering that x value is equals to 0. So for that we will get the value of y0 that is equals to p upon 4 beta cube ei into 2 plus bz. Here if we apply x is equal to 0 cos beta x will be the value 1. So p minus beta into mu 0 into cos beta x minus sin beta x. Sin beta x will be 0. Cos beta x will be 1. So b into m0. Now we are applying m0 is equals to minus pz by 2. So that will become as p z into beta upon 2 and minus minus will be the plus. And at front there will be a p. So p will be the common and you will get the value y0 is equals to p upon 4 beta q ei into 2 plus b beta z. Now the bearing pressure pv on the concrete at the joint face is k into y0. So again put the value of y0 in this equation you will get the bearing pressure on the concrete at the joint face. Okay. Now here value of k is suggested by a Grinter and a Freiburg together a range between 8300 to 41500 kilogram per centimeter cube. Now the modulus of Dowell's support is the reaction per unit area 
causing a deflection equals to the 1. Now, beta varies as a fourth root of k. It's a large changes in the volume of k that do not affect the stress calculation. So, it's not the large changes in the volume of k that affect the stress calculation greatly. So, Freiburg used the expression k0 into b to replace the modulus of foundation from Tamoshenko's model. Now, Freiburg's equation was developed using a semi-infinite double length. Double bars have a finite length, so this equation would not apply to the double bars used in the practice today. So, however, the Freiburg's equation can be used with the little to no error if the value of capital L is greater than 2, where this L is taken to be the length of the double bar that is embedded in concrete. Okay, so this was the analysis by the fry box on the double bars, specifically for the rigid pavement. The next topic that is overview for the pavement design for the low volume rope. A large proportion of India's villages have been connected with all weather roads due to the efforts that made by the National Rural Road Development Agency, the Ministry of Rural Development and the Government of India. The rural roads usually have the vo low volume traffic that consisting mostly the light transport vehicles that are like uh, agricultural tractors, trailers, uh, light goods vehicles, buses, animal drone vehicles, auto rickshaws, or the motorcycles and the bicycles. Now, uh, some of the rural roads may also have the light and the medium trucks that carrying the sugarcane or the quarry materials, etc. So, for that we need to design the pavement for the low volume roads at the ruler side and for that the concrete pavement have been constructed on many ruler roads under the PMGSY program. Rigid pavements are also being widely used on the minor roads of cities that carrying low volume of traffic because of that durability even under the poor drainage condition. The concrete pavements offer an alternative way to the flexible pavement, especially where the soil strength is poor, also the aggregate materials are not proper or aggregates are costly, also the drainage uh, condition is not that much good, okay. So the choice of pavement type that depend on this all factors with the life cycle cost, okay, so that the concrete pavements for the ruler road that can be the conventional screed compacted concretes, it can be roller compacted concretes, it can be interlocking concrete pavement blocks or it should it can be concrete pavements with the panel size of 0.5 by 0.5 or 1.2 by 1.2 meter. Well, if we talk about the self compacting concrete that is SCC, it can be also used since it is very poor and requires very little compaction and it has a successfully been used in India also in the Maharashtra in the different trial sections of the ruler roads. Okay, so this can be used as the low volume roads. Now if we talk about the stress condition for such concrete pavements, for the low volume, the roads that carrying a low volume traffic or the heavy vehicles are not frequent and the chance that highest axle load will act when the temperature gradient also very high and is likely to be a rare occurrence. The maximum tensile stresses in the edge regions of the slab will be caused by the occurrence of V load and the temperature differentials. So, this would occur during the day at the bottom in the case of interior and the edge regions. 
so basically when you are considering the low volume roads you should consider the load stresses as well as the temperature variations uh, temperature differentials because when there are very low volume traffic there would not be a major wheel load stress there would be the major stress because of the temperature differentials okay and when there is a considerable volume when there is a considerable vehicles are passing on that road there would be wheel loads as well as the temperature differential stresses on the pavement so let's discuss that how we provide the thickness and what thickness we should provide for the low volume roads so for the designing of the low volume road the reinforcement is not required to design low volume roads is classified as per the number of commercial vehicles per day that is cvpd and for which the thickness of the pavement is specified in irc sp62 according to that there are three different cases for selecting the pavement thickness the case one that is the pavement thickness for the traffic up to 50 commercial vehicle per day for that a sub base of 75 mm of water bound macadam road over the 100 millimeter granular sub base is considered okay now the sub subgrade soil has a cbr value of 4 percentage that is also selected the effective subgrade reaction value over the water bound macadam that is taken as a 42 mega pascal per meter now the thickness value for the dual wheel loads of 60 kilonewton are 160 millimeter for all the joint spacing with the 2.50 millimeter 3.25 meter and 4 meter since the temperature stresses are not considered over here for other k values we can use the different different trial values from the different thickness a minimum thickness of 150 meter is recommended for higher modulus of subgrade reaction so this was all about the case one for traffic below the 50 cvpd now the traffic in between 50 to 150 commercial vehicle per day we need to follow a table which gives us the pavement thickness for the different joint spacing in the pavement okay so these are the considerable thickness value okay but with that also we have to uh, satisfy the some criteria that is the cbr value of subgrade should be four percentage the subway should be of 75 millimeter with the water bound macadam over the 100 millimeter granular subbase course again here the effective subgrade reaction value that is 42 mega pascal per meter and the thickness variation is already mentioned over here this thickness is applicable to common subgrade soils that are maybe the clay maybe the silt maybe the silty clay okay and according to that there are the different different zones also available okay now if talking about the case 3 that is the pavement thickness for the traffic that is greater than 150 commercial vehicle per day for this also we have a table okay but here as a criteria we have to satisfy the cbr value for the subgrade that is eight percentage also here we have to provide a cementitious base course with the total thickness of 200 millimeter and also there is a specification that here the concrete that we are using should be of m30 grade okay the effective subgrade reaction value for the design is considered as a 100 mega pascal per meter and the fatigue cracking the fatigue cracking of pavement slab is considered because of here we are considering the heavy traffic that is around 150 commercial vehicle per day so now if we talk about the roller compacted pavement the roller compacted concrete pavement 
is used for the construction of the pavement specifically for the low volume roads and very popular in low volume road construction in the developed countries in such pavement the cracks may develop on its own surface to form the joints and assuming a thickness of this such pavement is 200 millimeter and these are the appropriate thickness for such kind of pavements the spacing of the blocks or the spacing of the tracks to be of 6 meter and initial traffic we are observing that is 100 commercial vehicle per day for such pavements the subgrade reaction value is 100 megapascal per minute okay so this was all about the overview of the pavement design for the low volume roads here we learn that how much thickness we can provide okay what kind of base and what kind of sub base we required for uh, constructing such kind of pavement okay so with this i am concluding my today's lecture Thank you so much students for your kind attention. I hope you understand the topic thoroughly. Thank you so much.